this thing. Hey again, YouTube. Nut job with a machete back <laughs> without another machete. Uh, this is a Christmas present from a friend of mine. Uh, this is a present from the guy who has the Chinese war sword machete, who you might have seen in my How to Carve a Pumpkin with a Machete Halloween special. Um, he has that big Chinese war sword machete, and he also now has a copious, and he bought me this for Christmas. Cold Steel second generation Warhammer. Uh, what's the main difference between the second generation and the first generation? Well, I actually think it is just the hammer pull section. Um, the first generation, I think, has the hammer like that, with the handle up and down relative to this direction, where this one is slightly tilted. Um, does that make a difference? I don't know, I don't have the Gen 1, but from what I can see, when you're smashing with it, um, more pressure is put on this one spot, and if they were tilted like this, it would be equal pressure on both of these. So I think it probably makes a little bit of difference just punching into things. Um, of note, I should say this first, when you get this thing from Cold Steel, you have to put it together yourself. Uh, some people have been commenting that they didn't know that. You have to put it together yourself. Um, the reason being, the langettes, these things, uh, on the original Warhammers, they would be either stuffed in behind or welded on. Um, you can see in some of Skulls, they're welded on, it's all one piece. Uh, some of them will even go up top and have a spike so that you can spike someone or hammer through armor. Obviously this one doesn't. This is the same hickory handle as the Cold Steel uh, Viking Axe. So if you need a replacement for your Warhammer, that's the handle. Or if you need a replacement for your Viking Axe handle, that's the handle. Uh, when you get it, what you have to do is um, either hammer this down or you know, smash this against the ground until this seats as far as you can get it. You might have to do a little bit of work like I did and just trim the wood until it seats in very nicely. Um, then what I did was the hex screw, I put that in to hold it in place. Um, Place the langettes, I actually taped them in place, pre-drilled the holes, put a little dab of glue, just because, uh, and then put the screws in. What you might see though is, see if I can get that, the screws kind of stick out. Um, so that's not something that's really, you know, a, a killer for me, but it is something to be aware of, because if you choke up up here, uh, the screws could bite in your hand a little bit. So. You could countersink the metal a little bit, there's not a lot of metal, or you could do it with brown screws, so it kind of looks like you riveted it in place. So that's just one thing to note. Uh, what's the purpose of the langettes? Well, normally, historically, it was so that if a sword came in, it wouldn't be able to chop the wood um, and have the head just you know, fall off, and then you're standing there with a stick. Um, in this case, I think it's really just to keep the head in place, because you're doing a lot of hitting with this, obviously. Uh, as you can tell, I've wrapped it up with Jonex um, tennis racket wrap. Uh, a lot of shock transfers in when you're hitting. I mean, you know, it's a hickory handle and it's a very long shaft with a heavy head, so the shock transfers through. Uh, and with the handle being shaped the way it is, uh, you'll find that uh, the webbing of your thumb might get a little sore. Uh, one of the things I really did notice, though, there is a difference from when you're hitting with the hammerhead and the feel of that to when you're hitting with the spike end and the feel of that in your hand. What you might see, if I can keep that in focus, is the design of the handle. Uh, you can see it's narrower down here. Well, that's where your hand will go if you're using that spike. So more pressure and the shock is transferred a little bit more. So just one thing to, uh, to be aware of when you're doing it. That all said, you know, a little critiques aside, I love this thing. <laughs> uh, if I could walk around with it, I probably would, truthfully. It would be wonderful to have in your car on just a really bad day. What's that? You cut me off? Something like that, right? Obviously don't do that. Um, I've been doing tests with this thing, uh, smashing tins and 
punching through tins and a few other items, wood, um, whacking the stump of death to see how much it buries in. That stump is uh, poplar, uh, seasoned poplar, and it buries in <laughs> pretty much you know, most of the length of the spike. But after all the tests, you'll see there's a little bit of wear and tear. No bending on the tip or anything, but the uh, paint's kind of stripped off a little bit. A uh, little bit of wear and tear on the hammer pole, but not a hell of a lot. Uh, one thing I noticed, actually, when using the hammer side and two-handing it, is if you hit it right, um, the head shears through thin metal. Um, obviously, I'm not going to use it on like a car or something like that. I don't have one sitting around. There's one sitting right here. What man will kill me? <laughs> so, obviously, I'm not going to use it on a car or anything like that. Um, but even just testing to see how much it would bury into a uh, steel belted radio that was deflated. Um, you guys have seen uh, my old intro, it's the uh, tire that I'm hitting with the sticks. Well, I put that on there and buried this in here and unfortunately broke it uh, before I managed to film any of it. So, But it buried right into the steel belted radio all the way up to the tip, so that was actually fairly impressive. Uh, I'll put the specs and everything below. Uh, I think, if I'm correct, this is actually lighter than the Cold Steel Viking uh, hand axe. Um, it feels heavier because all the weight is a little more concentrated forward. Um, and, you know, it, just depending on how you're gripping, if you're gripping it with the, uh, the back, the, the spike um, forward, it's going to feel a little bit heavier just because this uh, ridge is digging into your hand a little bit more. But, yeah, it's uh, not as light and obviously easy to move around as, you know, tomahawk or a hand axe or anything like that, but this thing was designed to be the medieval can opener. And uh, thank you very much for Warriors and Wonders. When uh, this was sent to me, it had a sticker on it that said medieval can opener. So thanks so much, guys. <laughs> ah, my suppliers are as crazy as I am. I love it. But yeah, why don't we go to some smash tests. Uh, coconut test, of course, because, well, you know, if this thing's going to go through <laughs> uh, metal helmet, like a 20-gauge uh, or maybe 10-gauge, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure the thickness of the helmets that this would go through. Uh, Cold Steel did some of their tests on helmets and uh, motorcycle helmets and stuff like that. So if you really want to see that, <laughs> you can check out their channel. But uh, the coconut test was actually pretty fun. I managed to put this spike, well, I managed to miss it the first time. And then I managed to put this spike into the coconut, and the coconut just exploded. Didn't even have to do the uh, hammer side to cause the coconut to just blow up. So, yeah, it's pretty damn fun. So let's go see that, and then I'll be right back. Shits and giggles. A few tins inside of a tin. Penetrated right into the wood. Didn't actually intend to. But hey, it ripped the hole right through and punched out the bottom. This proves nothing other than I've had a bad week. So I'm not entirely certain why the hell I had that ballistics gel test, <laughs> but hey, um, Spike obviously went into the ballistics gel. It's not gonna go in the same how okay that actually hurts but it's not going to go in the same way on flesh and skin um, as it did on that ballistic gel there's no dermis epidermis there's no skin on it there's also no clothing in the way 
So uh, I find that spiky things tend to penetrate just a little bit into it, um, a little bit easier than they would on you or me. Uh, but yeah, you saw the coconut just blow up, huh? And obviously I was having a little bit of a frustrating day when I was smashing up those tins, but the tins, uh, they actually got pretty smashed. Um, in the end, when you saw them all kind of compressed together and inside the big tin, uh, after I stopped filming, I wondered how thick that actually was, and compressed, the part where I punched through everything, was actually about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit over a quarter of an inch uh, thick. So, granted not steel, but this still punched through a quarter of an inch thick um, hunk of metal. I mean, obviously it's not like I'm going to go hunting people and see if this will go through tactical vests or, you know, their visor on their motorcycle helmet or anything like that, but uh, it's still kind of nice to uh, to do these fun tests. And of course, you know, <laughs> if it's not random destruction, it's not me. And of course, if it's not fruit death. <laughs> but I have to admit, this thing is fun. Um, it's definitely one of the more entertaining Christmas presents I got. Uh, not dissing any of the other Christmas presents I got. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's just say there's a reason I'm a nut job. But yeah, the Cold Steel Warhammer is a lot of fun. Um, I, again, I don't have the Generation 1. I probably won't pick it up because I have this one. Um, but if you have the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, what do you think are the differences between them? Uh, do you like one over the other? So maybe let us know in the comment section below. Um, as for, you know, do you want to get one of these things? Well, if you're willing to put in that little bit of work, putting on the Langats, uh, maybe fitting the head a little bit more, and, you know, if you wanted to customize the handle or something, then this is definitely something that, uh, that you'd enjoy. Uh, I most definitely do. It is fun. It's heavy, but it is fun. And it is just something that you really, really want to play around with until you do something stupid and accidentally put it through something. Uh, I think Zombie Go Boom used it to crack open one of their uh, Eisen heads, and I know they had a lot of fun with it. So, yeah, that's about it, guys. You know, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, feel free to click like, feel free to subscribe for future videos, and feel free to share this video as much as you want. And as always, guys, I'm the job with a machete. Until next time, stay sharp. Oh, I guess that ends sharp. Stay sharp. Is that in sharp or pointy? Stay pointy. <laughs>